Okay guys, so uh, I'm gonna put this at the front because I wanna walk you through the units we put in the boat. You're gonna see the finished product now and then behind this will be the install. Some really good tips from the guys from both Taylor and from Michael at Jones Trolling Motor. I'm gonna show you which units we decided to put in the boat and why. So, and by the way, um, basically I told the guys, I said I, I want the best I can get for both things, but Frankly, if I could save a few bucks, I'm going to save a few bucks. So I didn't want to overspend on any of the technology. So at the dash, what I have done is I have set up a hummingbird. Uh, and this is just a, a, a down imaging unit. I did not put side imaging because I'm running my side imaging over here. I went with a Gen 4 Helix 12. And I did that for this reason right here. I wanted hummingbirds mapping and as I talk about later I put it here because I want to be able to look down the lake and look at my map and supposed to looking off at all to the side so we went with and by the way these are both 12 so we went with a 12 inch helix I went with the helix I, I've not owned a Solix but I've had absolutely no problem with helixes and I've run them since they came out so I saved a few dollars going with the helix it's not touch screen I don't care I'm running the Lake Master Plus version three. So the Lake Master non plus, the current version is five. The only difference between the three and the five is this. With the plus, excuse me, with the original and the plus is this. With the plus, you get this little band around the lake of Google Map Overview. And I don't know that it matters much, but it looks cool and it's not much more money. So this is the Lake Master uh plus version three is the one in here and i'm pretty sure that's still the most current version so helix 12 here and really and truly all we're using it for i do have 2d in the hull so running down the lake i can use this unit or idling but this is the big boy unit so this unit i want to make sure i get the unit number right so bear with me just for a second okay so that is a gps map 8412 xsv this is this is the baddest unit I think they make. And we went with this unit because this is my side and down imaging unit. And guys, I don't have, make sure those are tight, I don't have a dog in this hunt. I've run hummingbird side imaging for a long time. Uh, Moon Pie, who you know I fish with quite a bit, runs, runs a Laurent side imaging. I gotta tell you, and you'll see a little bit at the end of this video, I've not seen better side imaging than that unit. And Garmin doesn't sponsor me, Jones sponsors me. And so I don't care whose unit I'm using, frankly. I just want to use the best. So 8412, this is a $3,800, $4,000 unit. Very, very nice unit. And I'll show you how I mounted the transducer on the back and also give you Jones's thoughts on the transducer mount as well. But those are our two dash units. We set it up on a Bass Boat Technologies dual mount. These are incredibly stable mounts, and I never noticed this before, but this little piece behind them, and actually it'll come out a little bit further, but that actually stabilizes the unit from the back too. So it's incredibly stable in all water conditions. On the front deck, which is truthfully where we spent our money, while well, I say that, we spent a little bit back there, we have a Helix 12. All I use this unit for is to read the uh, basically to use for mapping and to read my 360 unit. So I have a Hummingbird 360. By the way, um, I am. it is my understanding that if you buy one of those braces for this, it will void the warranty. Now, I did not confirm that with Hummingbird, but my understanding is if you brace this, this is designed to wiggle. If you brace this, that will void your warranty. So if you're thinking about bracing your 360, I would look into that before you do it. That front unit, by the way, and I got it on a, I got it on night vision, but that is, hold on, I'm going to tell you again for sure. So that unit is a GPS map 1222 XSV touch. Now, and so I talked to the Jones guys about this and I said, do I need that 8400 series up front? And they said, you do not. They said, this unit reads, uh, and I'm, by the way, so I'm shooting it with live scope, right? They said that unit shoots live scope every bit as good the pictures every good bit as good as it is back there for half the price so we went with the less expensive unit they're both gps maps so they talk to each other which was a big key 
And now let me show you a couple of other mining options that we'll talk about more in the rest of this video, but just so you can kind of see the, the summary right now. Okay, we'll talk a lot more about this, but that's the final product. That's that brand new Bass Boat Technologies mount. And as I talk about in the video, uh, I believe that's the second one they've ever produced right there. So that's our mount. And you can see I've staggered them. These will slide in and out. It'll tilt. It's got tremendous adjustability. I went this time with my live scope on the trolling motor and we'll talk about why I did that as opposed to the perspective mode, but you see it's right there. Okay, last thing I wanna show you is how I had them install my uh, transom side imaging. Now, it's right there, okay? So that is a transom, uh, a transducer saver and protector, I believe is the name of the company. I'll post it right there. That's there specifically for this. And you can see there is aluminum on either side of that. That is as safe as you can get it. Now, having said that, so in talking to Taylor, um, he said, you can pick up, pick up a little bit of dirty water right there based upon where that's mounted with water rolling off the bottom of the hull especially if you're trying to idle quickly. So he said, if you want the cleanest water you can get, they would have mounted it down there on the step hole and basically screwed it into the hull. But that's a $900 transducer. And there is a very high likelihood at Rayburn or Toledo or somewhere else I fish that I idle over something and break that transducer. So I chose to go with the transducer saver can't idle quite as fast and when I say fast I mean idling at one and a half mile an hour which is really about all I do maybe two when I'm side imaging is plenty fast for me but if you're really trying to idle something fast you're going to get some turbulent water where that one's set up so just be aware of that but again that's the safest way to do it and that's why I chose to use transducer saver because just like you if I break something I got to buy a new one so that's the setup transducer saver there Helix 12, 8412 XSV Garmin on a Bass Bolt Technology mount. Brand new Bass Bolt Technology mount here. Helix 12, again, basically, this one is purely for mapping and 360. This one is for live scope. That's the predominant, matter of fact, this unit's almost, the only time it's on is when I'm running my live scope. So that's the setup, non-perspective mode, non-braced 360 transducer. Now let's jump right in and let Yoder, Michael Yoder and uh, Taylor Johnson take you through the entire install with some great ideas about why they do things the way they do things and a little hint specifically on rigging a Lynx boat to make it a heck of a lot easier to, to rig. So hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video. Hi guys, good morning. We're back here at Jones Trolling Motor with Michael Yoder and we're rigging the Bass Cat. Now you had, so it's hard to get cables running this boat. Yes. So show us what you did to make it a little bit easier. That's a real simple thing a guy could do at home. Oh, right back here around the driver's console area, everybody gets a boat, always upgrades their electronics. They need network cables. We need ethernet cables. We need 2D sonar from the back along with uh, side scan, down scan transducers. Well, your hole is up underneath this dash and you can't hardly get your wires. TH Marine sells a little bitty vent. I don't even think the thing is five bucks. Drill a hole, put your vent there, helps the boat breathe, and you can access your panel a hundred times easier. So now it's just so much easier to wire the boats. If you want to add stuff, take stuff out later, it's really simple. Everybody knows that this game with so many cables, transducers, ethernet, you, something always goes out and you have to change it. It takes you 30 seconds to get them four screws out and these yellow rods, which are bought at Harbor Freight, they're fiberglass, mm -hmm. they link together. You can run something in less than five minutes if you have this access hole that you can get to easily. Okay, good deal. And there's, there's another panel on the other side, I'm assuming if you would want to run something over there, but that's actually probably also a speaker hole, I would guess. I think dealing with bass cats before it's probably a speaker hole okay the only thing that would go through that side would be the trolling motor cables and they bass cat does put extra big wire you'll never need to upgrade the trolling motor cables how handy is it to be able to pull those box lids off the bike 
pretty handy. It helps a ton with us rigging a boat because a lot of times we're bent over from the front side or back side working around the door and now it's just completely open for us to kind of work freely throughout the boat. Okay. Let's go to the front of the boat. So Taylor and I talked before I came down here. All right, so Taylor and I talked beforehand that we were gonna remove the perspective mount and it gives me a couple of advantages. It makes it real, way easier to lift the trolling motor up, right? Definitely. So the trick now is I'm running the 360 and the, uh, the live scope. So let's let's show everybody how you did that and let's show them how you routed the cables. All right, so what we did, being that we've got 360 now, we did away with perspective because you've got 360 to give you that view. So what we did to give us more space for adjustment here, we went ahead and moved the live scope down to the barrel of the trolling motor on the actual motor. So that gives you more adjustment room here for depth later on down the road trying to fish shallow water. And then Tape, as always, no zip ties on the live scope. And talk about why again. I know that's been some time ago. Yeah, it voids a warranty. If you ever have a transducer go out for a live scope and they see the zip tie marks on it when you send it into them, no warranty. So the easiest thing to do is just tape it on there. Tape it on there. You may have to, you know, replace your tape once a year or something like that from water, but it's a whole lot better than a $900 transducer. Absolutely. So, cable straight up the shaft on the live scope. And then right here we've added in a just a little clamp just to run the wire through so this is not going all over everywhere and then 360 mount to the old tricks just like always wires coming down right here i routed that live scope wire through a gap between the steering module and the 360 mount and then everything comes up to the sheath and down the sheath and also on the built-in sonar wire we've got it coiled up with the coily cable that way it's not just laying all over where it gets cut you know gets stretched anything like that you got plenty of slacking so uh so you you saw something the way the boat was set up that was out of the box on the Minkota that you changed explain what you did there so when you get one of these trolling motors out of the box your built-in sonar wire that comes out of the head right here is just going to be coiled up in a ball so Instead of running down through the middle of these coils like most people do, and we've seen a lot of rigging jobs show up that way, I go and I match it to the coils down the whole way to here and then jump off and go down to the sheath. That way you got plenty of slack, you don't have any stretch, any breaks, anything like that. So you actually have created your own stretch in your, that, that's brilliant, that's a good idea. Something I wouldn't have thought about. Good deal, Taylor, thanks. Hey guys, so we're, we're rocking along on the install of all my electronics and I want Taylor to show you something. So uh, we had reached out to the folks at Bass Boat Technology and they have developed a product. This product is not even, is it available Taylor, do you know? It is available, um, you know, special order you have to call Van and the people at Bass Boat Technologies to get one of them. But uh, it's a new, uh, I guess you'd say prototype, but it is available mount. Um, It'll fit certain bass cap models. Uh, not 100% sure this is on the links, so it will fit that. It's with the higher angle down here in the tray. Lift that out so you so what you're talking about there. Oh, you've already got it bolted down, don't you? Yeah, I already got bolts on the back side of it. So what, what you're seeing is there's a little ramp underneath there is what he's talking about. Yeah. And, and so they've angled it where it sits right on top of it. I think you can see it right there. Maybe you can take that over here. There we go. Yep, so you got an angle right here, and what they did was they built this mount in with the same, you know, angle offset. That way your graphs will be right here flat. And instead of the traditional dual stack top mount that Bass Boat Technologies has always had, this one's offset where you got this graph set over this direction a little bit, and you got this one set over this way. And then you also have the ability right here to loosen these four bolts up and angle this how you need to to get your graphs the direction you want them without them hanging way over the side of the boat. And this was something somebody specifically requested, right? Yes, this was uh, Takahiro uh, that fishes the MLF Pro Tour. He uh, requested this because this year he's running a cat, uh, first time he's ever ran one in his career, and he wanted a good option that was similar to what he's always had on his Rangers. And so this is what Van and the guys at Bass Boat Technologies came up with for him. And part of the idea I also heard him say was so you could lower these graphs because apparently Takahiro said he didn't want to keep hitting his graphs with yep. his baits. So it really gets them down, gets them out of the way, be a lot easier to step over into the boat. That's a very slick setup. 
And then uh, I'll show you here in just a second what we're putting at the dash to double stack the units at the dash as well. So something else that uh, Van and the guys at Bass Book Technologies did on this mount versus some of his other ones, normally these four bolts right here that allow you to do the pivot on the mount, you'd have nuts and washers on the back side of it. On this one, he made these little pieces with the inserts in them, that way they're just direct threaded into these. And you can still tighten them up and it's still just as secure as using nuts, but you don't have to try to fumble with the nuts to get all of them on there and get them lined up. You just, you know, get one of them under there and get it started and then threaded right in to go. I'm gonna make absolutely no comment about the fact that he just talked about fumbling with nuts. That's right. <laughs> So interestingly, uh, Van said something to me on the phone talking about this mount, and I didn't understand what he was saying, and Taylor just figured it out. So check this out. So Bass Boat Technologies has always had the swivel adjustment on a lot of their you know, front bow mounts, but on this one, you've also got slotted holes in your base where you have a couple inches of side-to-side -side play to get them set up how you want them, plus the angle to get it set up exactly right, you know, Per each person how you want That's it and need slick. it. That's very cool. Good job, Bass Boat Technologies. So Michael has installed our, our dual mount Bass Boat Technologies across the front right there. So we're going to have Humminbird here, Garmin here. We're going to have kind of the best of everything. We'll show you what the finished product looks like here. Uh, it's going to look like in about 10 seconds, but it's going to be a little longer than that. So one of the things, and this is just from doing it for years and years that Michael suggested, is we've actually moved the mount a little bit to the side of the boat, and that's going to give us real clean clearance right, right there. there. Because again, when, and I don't have both consoles in here all the time, but it's a pretty narrow space between the consoles. Yeah. Because they're big consoles in the well, boat. When you get up like this, you're not yep. catching your 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 yep. hip right here on it. It's all flush. That's clean. It's Straight really line. clean looking. And we chose. Now this is just it's personal preference, but we chose to put. So we'll be running mapping on the Hummingbird and side and down imaging on the Garmin. And what we talked about is I would rather have my map on the center line because that's if I'm running down the lake, especially at speed looking, I want to be able to look at my map and still look right over it down my center line or where I'm running. So that's the way we're going to rig them. I got a question. Is speed looking a turn? <laughs> speed looking is it? Guys, Taylor's out here with me. Uh, what's the little lake we're on? Bringle Lake. Say it again? Bringle. Bringle. We're on Bringle Lake just outside of Texarkana. And this is one of the things I like about working with these guys is, now we're about to get run off, but as you can see, but uh, we got everything rigged. We brought it out here now. We're making sure everything works right. He's gonna help me set up my, my Garmin side imaging. Everything on the front deck's working good. Let me show you. So you see, we got our live scope and we got our 360 imaging right there. Mega 360 imaging, we got no interference from either one. We're on spot lock, which is a key deal when you're running the Minn Kota not to have any interference. I want to show y'all before the rain gets on us how we sort of set up the back end of the boat. So we, so in the back we went a 31 series AGM, a 331 series, what I call wet cells. You can see everything set up. I've got my throw cushion in there so I'm legal. So you got our blade pumps over there. We got the storage over there. We'll put some tools in. Super easy access to everything as you guys saw when they were rigging it. And uh, just a really nice setup. I wish this thunderstorm wasn't sneaking in on us. We probably fish a little bit, but uh, I do not like thunder and lightning. So. Uh, we're going to finish setting get us some things up. Uh, he just, he's messing with our color scheme on our side imaging. So I know the, uh, the audio is not great, but we were just playing with color schemes and uh, Taylor was showing me, this is a color scheme that if you do your most recent update in your Garmin, you'll probably get and we really like it. What's it called? It's called Ice Blue right there.
And what he was saying is it's a new it's a new color they've added in the in the templates. And uh, he said the fish really light up on it, especially on a low light day like today. Turn with me out of the box. He pretty much runs the Garmin uh, stock. You uh, you said on the you like running the 455 pretty much saw on the side imaging. Yeah, I pretty much always run 455 on Garmin side imaging. You know, other than on some of the newer ultra high def models. You know, there's times when I run the high def frequency, but most time I'm a fan of 455 because you get all around good clarity, depth, everything. That's those. That's like those pictures you see in the store. That's right. Do you, do you tweak it anymore if you're getting pictures like that, or do you just go, "Crap, that's as good as you're gonna get"? There's some tweak to it. You know, it's it's kind of a odd deal. It just depends on the day. You know, like your contrast. You know, you might want to go up on it a little bit to make everything a little bit brighter to you. Um, and then, so your brightness on a garment is actually you're gonna be like your sensitivity. So see if we crank it way down, it makes your screen a lot darker, but then you crank it up, you know, it makes it easier to see your returns. Um, some people are a fan of running on auto. I do run auto sometimes like the auto medium because it'll adjust with your light for the day and kind of keep you in the, in the groove. Um, but to get the most out of your stuff, you're going to want to, you know, set it yourself to get it exactly how you need it. Um, Beyond that, there is one other setting on side scan on these, uh, when you're running 455 frequency, you come in here to menu, side view setup, and you want to go to noise rejection right here, and you want to turn this TVG to medium or high, in this case I'm running high because it filters out a lot more of your water col uh, column trash, and it gives you a better, you know, picture of your bottom out to the sides. So, you know, if, if you were to go down on this a little bit, see, it just lets you get more of your water column clutter. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking more for like crappie and small fish and bait and that kind of thing, you might want to run it on medium. But if you're looking more so for those big fish offshore, you want to run it on high because you're going to always see those big bass offshore when you've got it on high because they always show up really, really bright and big. You guys can't tell, but you see those swervy lines on the left. He made a corner right there. Is why it, yep. why it uh, it got a little weird looking. All right, so there you go. Those guys know what they're doing. I'm really pleased with it. I will also mention the only mistake I've made so far in rigging this boat is this. Uh, I had always put those over there, but where that trolling motor set up, I thought I'm going to try them over here, not realizing that I stand on my right foot almost all the time. I keep stepping on these buttons, so in the next video you see, those buttons will be moved over there because that's a bad placement for me to put those buttons. And I may play with them a little bit and move them around a little bit more, but in my rigging so far, that is the only thing that I have seen that we, I say we, I didn't do correctly because I told them to put them right there. So there you go, guys. Thanks for tuning in and uh, more videos next week. I think we'll have a three for again next week if I can get, the, get enough editing done. Thanks, guys.